Oh, it's like I just never got hungry. I never got hungry during the day. When you eat like this, you stay satisfied. And the muffin recipe, because I know you're like, what what was in the muffin already? And you're you're healthier. Okay? So that in a nutshell is how these foods end up on superfood lists. But when you eat sugar, okay, what I have found, my personal opinion, is it's like a drug. And it takes a little time for you to detox from sugar. So you're going to crave it a little bit initially when you're cutting it back. But if you have diabetes and you would like not to have diabetes and you would like not to have to spend the kind of ridiculous money. Okay, number one, I don't understand why insulin is so expensive. Yeah. When we left the hospital, it cost me $800 at CVS. With the first round of medication. That was a shock. I guess, I, you know, all I'm going to say to you is I have taken everything that's happened to us as a blessing. But yeah, that was a shock. To have to pay that much money. It's like, wow, well, we can't do that again. On December 29th, Dale had a heart attack last year. And... I haven't talked about this much because it's really been a shock to us. <laughs> Our entire home life has changed since then. And it's taken me until just now to be able to talk about it openly. So when, um, when this happened, the doctors tried to do the quicker version where they just go in up through the leg and, you know, I guess, I think they call it a, a calf. And I may be saying that wrong, but um, his blockages were too great. So he had to have open heart surgery. And um, I know we got lucky with his surgeon, Dr. Boone's Wang here in Columbus, Ohio. Because he takes um, a holistic approach to his work. He said to us, and he was, um, he had a very, he has a very forceful personality, which doesn't surprise me because, you know, he goes into people's chests for a living. So, of course, you know, it made sense that that was his personality. He met with us a couple times before, and you know, it was brief. Doctors don't have a lot of time to talk to you. You know, they're, they're in surgery and they're in meeting, you know, they're busy, they're busy. So in the short time that he did spend with us, he made it abundantly clear, crystal clear that he could fix Dale but that if Dale wanted to be healthy and not be back in his office and, you know, back on the table within five years, within eight years, that we needed to change our diet. The other thing I didn't realize, and I don't know if you guys do, but people who have open heart surgery, apparently all open heart patients have diabetes. And I don't know why that is, but that is what we were told. Another shock. You know, it's one thing to have the open, I mean, the whole thing was a complete, complete shock. So Dr. Boone's Wang said, diabetes is, does not have to be forever. He made that clear. He said diet can absolutely change diabetes. It can treat it. It can cure it. That's what he told us. And that diet would keep Dale out of the hospital. You know, it was up to us because he could fix Dale, but we needed to do, we needed to do our part. So when we came home, I went through the pantry 
and I threw everything out that was not on what I thought the list was. And at first, you know, you, you're trying to get your bearings. And we started out with a very, very simple diet because not knowing what was healthy or what wasn't, we kept it real simple, okay, in the beginning. Because number one, um, when they come home, they don't have a big appetite anyway, okay? They're not eating as much as they were. What I want to tell you is that when he came home from the hospital, he was taking a long-acting dose of insulin at night, and then he was taking a short-acting dose with every meal, okay? And it was, I don't remember the tech, you know, it was a lot. It was often and it was a lot. And over a very short period of time, almost immediately, he, um, we had to keep backing off of the insulin because his blood sugar was low. So the food that we were eating was helping his blood sugar to stay in the range that it needed to be in. We stayed on that and now he is completely off of insulin and um, he's taking metformin, okay? Okay, my goal is that he doesn't have to take any medicine. That's been my goal from the, from the beginning, since as soon as I got him home. The way I knew, number one, we're on a budget, okay? Dale and I have always been on a budget since I met him. <laughs> so, you know, not only were we hit with huge bills, because, yeah, insurance is great. I'm thankful, very thankful that he had the insurance he had. However, with the deductibles, you know, we're still paying on the hospital bills. We're still paying the bills. So we didn't have money to pay for a lot of expensive medication and pay the doctors back. We just didn't have enough for both. Plus, I wanted him healthy. And I didn't want him to have to go back, and neither did he. It's a big scare. It's like getting smashed in the head. It's like, okay, you know, it really gets your attention when you have a heart attack. And I can see how, you know, he says that, no, he would have, he would have gotten his wake up call, but I'm not so sure. Had they patched him up quickly and he had been home, I don't, I don't know how quickly he would have left the hospital if, because they tried, um, they tried to do the cath pretty quick. I, I don't, I think he was there a day. They tried to do it before New Year's Day, and so I, I think we would have been back home in just a couple of days had had that worked, had that procedure worked. But because he had to sit there and cool his heels, we were in the hospital two weeks, two weeks on the heart ward over the holidays, mainly because, you know, it was vacation time. And so, you know, we, we had to wait for him to have his surgery. So two weeks in the hospital, and then that is an invasive, invasive surgery. It was a 12 week recovery and really longer than that because he still doesn't have all of his strength back in his upper arms. He's, he's been working in his shop and you know, he, he's a knife maker, so he, he does a lot of buffing and, you know, he uses his arms and he he's, has a physical job, but he's still not 100%, and it's been nine months. So it is an invasive surgery. So if you've had a calf and you got patched up, I can see how you might not take it as seriously <laughs> as when they crack your chest open. 
and do it the other way. At any rate, I've taken it all as a blessing because number one, we almost lost him. Number two, we did change a lot of things in our life. And, you know, as soon as I could, I went to the doctor too, because I hadn't been in a while. And I needed to make sure, it's like, you know, we didn't know he wasn't a healthy, I need to make sure I'm healthy. And yeah, I got a clean bill of health. But you know what? I changed my diet with him. Number one, I wanted to help him. Um, I wanted to make it permanent. Dr. Boone's Wang said our diets that we eat, and he was saying, you know, we in the generic term in America, our American diets are not healthy. And so I wanted to, you know, no, I wasn't eating McDonald sausage biscuits on the way to work. I wasn't working at the time. But and no, I didn't have the stress that he had, you know, with the day-to-day. -day. I didn't have that, okay? But I wanted to make sure that I was healthy, too. So I did, and I was. But I still changed my diet with him. Out of solidarity and the fact that we needed to save money and out of the fact that, you know, what am I, an idiot? I think I'm bulletproof. I don't need to eat the way I'm healthy. No, I heard what he said. So I changed our, my diet as well. So basically, we cut out all sugar, all of it, as much as absolutely possible. We cut out initially almost all beef, all, you know, all meats of any kind. The only kind of beef that we allowed ourselves was turkey, okay? And um, we've got a friend who hunts. And he catches deer, you know, he, he, and so we had some deer meat, which has no hormones, no nothing in it. Honest kill, okay? So occasionally we would eat some, some deer meat. And um, lots of greens, a lot of spinach. Dale loves spinach. So it was um, the dead of winter when he came home. But as soon as we were able to put the garden in, we did. And we planted a lot more greens this year. And that's what we eat. You know, lots of salads, lots of greens, lots of veggies. So, you know, this kind of diet is doable. It's doable on a budget. And I'm saying, you know, if you have this, this video is for, for the following people. Number one, if you have diabetes. Number two, if you're on a budget and you need your food dollars to be stretched, because I don't know about you, but every month, one of our largest line items on our budget is food. It costs a lot of money to eat. But what I have found is if you grow it yourself, it's darn near close to free. Because a lot of the food that we grow, okay, we live in, we live in a, a small house on a small lot. I don't know the exact size of our lot. I don't even know if it's a quarter acre. It may be less than a quarter acre. And I know it's situated where the house is real close to the front of the, of the road. So it's situated in a way where we have, you know, in proportion, most of it available to us in our backyard. But even if it were not, I would find a way to do our landscaping. And I'm not above it. I'm probably I'm doing it. I'm I'm slowly bringing the herb garden towards the front of the house because I love herbs. Even though we have a very small lot, we have a beautiful garden. An absolutely beautiful garden and yeah we live in Ohio with the most beautiful dirt I've ever seen I've lived in Connecticut I've lived in Georgia Georgia with the red clay and you know Connecticut there was there was no topsoil it was just I've never seen dirt like this it's amazing our soil is amazing every time every time we put a shovel in the ground it just amazes me it's like gold I love it <laughs> Anyway, um, enough about the dirt already. 
but Dale loves to garden, okay? And I love the herbs. So I can, um, we can our food. I'm saying it's easier than you think. And even when we lived in an apartment, we had a beautiful garden and we had basically a walkway, but it was enclosed. And so on the fence, we had hanging, we had, we had shelving and we had container gardening and we had a lot of it. And we had a little patch where we could have some, we had peppers and tomatoes and we had herbs. So at a bare minimum, we had at least that growing. And then when we moved here, we were able to have a garden. And for the two of us, and like I said, we have a small lot, we plant more food than we can eat. We plant more food than we can eat. And yeah, it takes a little, and it's basically organic growing because we have, um, we have treated every now and then, but we really try not to treat it all, okay? And for whatever reason, we can't grow zucchini and squash, so I don't think we're going to grow that anymore. We just keep, we experiment. We've been here, we've had, I guess we've had three seasons of planting so far. And, you know, it's trial and error. It doesn't always work. Dale's done some extensive gardening videos, and I'll leave a link if you want to watch some of his videos. But he and I both took a very active role in his recovery. And it hasn't been easy, you know, between having to basically change it, you know, be told you're broken, physically broken and helpless. That's how they come home. I can see how it would be easy to, number one, give up. Or number two, want to go back to your comfort way of eating. But he didn't do that, so I'm proud of him for that. Number two, I just took it as a given that... Dr. Boone's Wang was correct. I felt in my heart he was right and that we needed to do our part. So what I'm saying to you is it is less expensive than you think to eat healthy. Because in the winter when we didn't have the garden and we were told you need to eat greens, we were eating greens. And what I found is, you know, in it was 99 cents for a bunch of like romaine lettuce. Well, I would buy a couple bunches. And I also found, um, so I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown of what we've been eating. We eat a lot of peanut butter and, and the foods that we eat, it's there, there are no extra sugar added. It's the lower cost items. That's the other crazy thing. It's like you can't find it in the name brands. Always, not necessarily, but, but what I found, we live in a small town. We don't have a Whole Foods down the street. We don't have, I mean, we've got a Walmart and we got a Kroger. That's it. I got to go into town 30 minutes to go to Aldi. And I do occasionally and I stock up. I wish they were here. Please come to London, Ohio. Please, Aldi. But but here's what we here's what we eat. Traditional steel cut oats. That is a superfood. We went okay, Dale went online and he found a list of the superfoods. And that's what we started with. We we took those items. We said that, you know, we saw on a couple different lists on when we Googled it. And we only ate those foods. Yeah, it was a little boring, but whatever. After what we went through, shock, basically, totally both of us in shock. We kept it simple for the longest time. So that's what you can do. But here are some of the items that we eat. We eat cinnamon. We eat steel cut oats, the traditional. No, nothing quick. If it's quick, if, 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 if the quick is on the label, don't do it. Get the traditional. Because number one, what I have found is the quick stuff only saves you like 10 minutes. Okay, you still got to cook it. And I'm talking about traditional oats. And what I do 
is I will cook a big batch. There's just two of us, but I'll cook um, enough oats that basically it'll last about five days, eight cups of water, two cups of oats. And yeah, it takes 35 minutes to cook it. But then you, you jar it up, it's ready, it's in the fridge, it's easy to pull out. Um, we put unsweetened applesauce in it. And here's another clue for you. Even if something says it's unsweetened, because it's not loaded with sugar, it's got more of the good stuff in it. It tastes better. It tastes sweet still. So unsweetened applesauce is the cheap stuff because it's the brand, the store brand. And it tastes like a quality premium item because it's more apple and less bologna. I don't know what else the bologna is. I don't know. I'm just saying there's less chemical and it tastes better. That's been my experience in, in all of these you know, unsweetened things that we've gotten. Also, unsweetened apple juice. I haven't found that at Aldi. They don't have that. I wish they did. But um, these are all store brands that we buy, and they taste like a premium quality product that you would pay a premium price for, is what I have found. And when they're on sale, I stock up. That's, that's basically how I've been doing it. Milk. You know, watch it with the milk. Um, what I have, uh, Dr. Boone's Wang talked about milk, and I don't, I, I can't remember everything he said, but basically he said, if you're going to drink milk, drink the skim milk. So that's what Dale's drinking. He drinks the skim milk. And, and he drinks less of it. Okay. We have switched from flour, white flour, to, um, the dark flour, it's just better for you. With the bread, we eat the store brand. It is, um, you know, no, no white bread, zero. We don't eat it. We just don't eat it anymore. And the, the, the specific rye that we eat is from Kroger. I don't know if you can get it anywhere else. I'm sure you can, but it's the dark Jewish rye and it's thin sliced because the thinner it is, of course, there's less material you're eating, but it's hearty and we keep it in the fridge because it's the kind of bread that will quickly go back because there's less preservatives in it. So what I have found is these superfoods that we have by their very nature, there's just a lot more, there's, there's just a lot more nutritional value in them. And when you eat them, what I have found is, number one, you are more satisfied. They, they, these are foods that stick with you longer. And that's why they're good for you, for your blood sugar, because they take a long time to work through your system. And what does work through your system is cleansing your system. And it is helping to maintain a healthy balance throughout the entire day. So you're less hungry and you're, you're healthier, okay? So that in a nutshell is how these foods end up on superfood lists. But when you eat sugar, okay, what I have found, my personal opinion, is it's like a drug, and it takes a little time for you to detox from sugar. So you're gonna crave it a little bit initially when you're cutting it back, but if you have diabetes, and you would like not to have diabetes, and you would like not to have to spend the kind of ridiculous money. Okay, number one, I don't understand why insulin is so expensive. Yeah. When we left the hospital, after all that I'd been through, it cost me $800 at CVS with a first round of medication. That was a shock. I guess, I, you know, all I'm going to say to you is I have taken everything that's happened to us as a blessing, but yeah, that was a shock to have to pay that much money. It's like, wow, well, we can't do that again. Thank you. We can't do that again. So if you, if you would like not to have to do that and, and you know, forget about all the other complications that come with diabetes. Okay which are numerous, numerous. It's a silent killer is what it is. It attacks all your, it attacks your hands. 
it attacks your eyes, it attacks your feet, it attacks your heart, it attacks, I mean, it's, it's a killer. And I haven't done the statistics, but I remember back when Dale was doing his research and looking at blogs for diabetes when he first, you know, was able to get up and start, start looking at this. The numbers are astronomical. How many people are living with pre-diabetes or diabetes? And the fact that we're told it's a chronic illness, yeah, it's chronic if you don't change your ways. But it's treatable. It's more than treatable. I think it's, it's curable because we've done it. You know, the doctor said we could do it. I believe he was telling us the truth. We came home, we changed our diet, and, we, and yeah. Basically, he is now on, he's got two, what is he on? He's, he's got three medications that he's taken. Two of them are for heart. He's got two heart medications. And he's got one, the metformin, which is a whole lot cheaper than the insulin. So I've seen it. We've, we've completely um, changed where he was from December. And we did it quickly, within just a few months. So um, the foods that he's on primarily are unsweetened applesauce, bananas, they're good for you, um, dark Jewish rye bread, peanut butter, and get the cheap brands. The less sugar possible, yeah, you need to read the labels a couple times. Unsweetened orange juice, it's a store brand. I can't find it elsewhere. You know, you go, you go to the refrigerated section it will blow your mind when you go look. It's like the amount of orange juice to choose from. Only one unsweetened. And it tastes like a premium brand. It's delicious. Same price. Same price. But it is better for you. There's more nutrition when you drink that glass as opposed to one that's full of sugar. Because when you drink, when, when you have a lot of sugar, you just crave it more in a little while. Basically what I found, you know, I was healthy prior to changing my ways and getting on the bandwagon with him. No, I wasn't eating McDonald's sausage biscuits, but I was buying three packages every week of Reese cups. Okay, and it was never enough. You know, you eat it, and it's like, oh man, that was good. And then 20 minutes later, you want more, and 20 minutes later, you want more. It's like you got to keep feeding that crave. So when I cut that out, yeah, initially I missed it, but not for long. Because when you eat the other food, it's like when I started eating those greens, it was like, wow, I just felt better. Anyway, I, I just immediately felt better. I immediately felt better. So cutting out sugar is huge. Absolutely huge. And it is less expensive than you might think. And yeah, you can do it in moderation. But basically what we decided was the way the way that we approached it was only eat what we know is safe initially and then slowly Slowly, we have incorporated other things. And the reason I made this video today is what we do. Dale loves to cook. Okay, he loves to cook. Here, here's the other thing I was going to get back to. He made some muffins a couple nights ago. They were delicious. They are delicious. I'm still eating them. And what I found is they have that stick-to-your-bone factor. They've got another superfood is blueberries. Another superfood is cherries, which I've incorporated every, you know, I used to have a bowl of ice cream every night. We would have a bowl of ice cream every night. That was our little treat. Now I have switched it, basically still have a little treat, but it's, it's not a sweet treat, but to me it, it tastes sweet. It's like you're, it's easy to change your perception pretty quick. Initially it's like, who wants to eat yogurt, you know, that's tart? Well, you know what? It's good. I love it. It's my treat now. I eat cherries. 
with zero fat. It's in the it's in the health section, and I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong. I think it's Fage, <laughs> but um, it's Fage zero percent yogurt, and I buy a bag, and then they're expensive, yeah, but you know what? They're good for me, and it's my treat. It's my treat. But I buy a bag of the cherries in the frozen section. Okay, and I buy the blueberries in the frozen section because I know when they first pick them, they're fresh. And that way, I don't know about you, when I buy a bag of, when I buy a container of blueberries, if you don't eat them immediately, like that day or the next day, they go bad. So I don't buy those fresh. And we meant to plant a cherry tree and we didn't do it this spring. We got busy, we got busy. But um, until we do, I'm going to continue buying my cherries in a bag. And yeah, they're like $13.99. But one bag lasts me, it lasts me, um, you know, over two weeks. And I have it every day, sometimes twice a day. It's my little treat. And uh, a cup of yogurt. So that's really the only um, dairy product that I have every day. Sweet potatoes. I'm really scared because we planted a patch of sweet potatoes behind Dale's shop and those things are like monsters. I'm really, I mean, they're like, it's kind of like the little shop of horrors. <laughs> I'm scared what's going on back there. So um, I'm excited about that because um, sweet potatoes can be expensive at the local um, grocery. I know they're pretty reasonable at Aldi. I don't know how much they are at Walmart. But what I have also noticed, and I don't know why it is, I don't know why, but what I have found is the things that we grow in our backyard just taste better. Like I said, we're doing it organically. To And I'm, when I say that, I mean almost 100% organic because we do not treat the soil except with our mulch. Okay, we do our mulch. The soil is already fabulous to begin with. And um, we've only treated a couple times like like the um, zucchini and the squash. So uh, so we're probably just not going to grow those because I don't like to treat any of it. I don't like to. I'm a nature girl. I want, I want what I want. And I want it natural. So, um, yeah, sweet potatoes, steel cut oats, dark Jewish rye bread. And no, it doesn't taste like rye bread. It tastes like regular bread. But put it in the fridge because it will go bad on you if you don't. You can toast it if you like. So we eat a lot of peanut butter sandwiches around here. And you know what? They're good. I don't get tired of them. And the food that we eat, when you eat it, it's it stays with you. Number one, you, you it costs less money. It costs less money. So even though we are eating higher quality food, that, yeah, um, a loaf of bread is, depending on if it's on sale or not, it's two thirty nine or $1.99. And I never fool around. I buy, okay, just so you know what I buy. I buy three jars of um, unsweetened orange juice every week. I buy two to three loaves of the dark Jewish rye every week. I We go through two jars of peanut butter, at least a jar, at least a jar and a half, at least a jar and a half. We go through a, uh, a bunch of bananas, and I buy them as green as possible because Dale doesn't want the extra sugars when they start turning that real yellow and then they go brown. That means they're sweetening up. So he likes them, he likes them green. But we will go through at least a bunch, a bunch and a half of bananas every week. We eat um, lots of greens. Okay, so in the past, our plate would look, it's, it's the stuff you always hear. Okay, let me keep going. We go through a pot of, like I said, um, eight cups to two cups of uh, oats, the steel cut oats, traditional, the long cooking, 35, 40 minutes. But like I said, I cook a big batch and then I put it in the fridge and then it's easy to pull out and, and you pop it in the microwave and to sweeten it naturally I use unsweetened um, applesauce, so we buy, um, you know, that lasts a good long while, probably 
one jar of applesauce last at least a week and a half, really more like two weeks. We don't, we don't go through as much applesauce as you might think. I go through a jar of that Faj yogurt every week. He does drink close to a gallon of milk a week, but it's the skim milk, okay? I go through, I probably buy a bag of cherries mm, every two and a half weeks, maybe. Um, we use a carton of eggs. Now, he's got a friend that has chickens in his backyard, organically raised, free range, you know, all that good stuff. No chemicals. So we, we do buy those from him. We maybe go through a carton of eggs every three weeks, so we're not eating anywhere near. It's a treat. The eggs are a treat. We eat lots of organic cinnamon. So what I have found as well is do what you can do in the increments that you can do. But what you're going to find, and the apple juice is amazing. Um, the unsweetened apple juice, I love it. That's my favorite. Dale loves the orange juice, but I love the apple juice. And when it's on sale, I buy it and I stock up because sometimes I'll go and they don't have it. And um, so that we don't go without, oh, another item. Let me, this is a big one. Coconut oil is really good for you and coconut milk. So we go through... Um, we go through a container of the coconut milk and um, we started buying, and it's unsweetened, everything unsweetened, okay, because it's naturally sweet anyway, so it's not like you're going without anything sweet, but you do have to adjust your taste buds. It does take a little while to adjust, okay, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that. It's not. It is. This is an adjustment, but it's a quick adjustment because what you find is your body is being fed what it needs to have. You're more satisfied and you begin to crave, you know, like me with the cherries and the, the zero yogurt, the zero fat yogurt. I crave that like I used to crave ice cream, you know, cherry vanilla ice cream. It's, it's just, I've switched it and I feel better. I look better and I feel better. I'm trying to think what else. We've added nutmeg. We, we, we try to use... What we've done is we've taken the superfood list. We've incorporated that as much as possible. Here's what I keep trying to get around and I haven't gotten to it. We've eliminated flour, okay, all white flours. And, and to, to offset that, because Dale loves to bake, and we don't eat a lot of it, but we have, we've switched to cornmeal. Okay, cornmeal is just, it's just better for your body. And he made the most amazing muffins two nights ago. I think I started to tell you this, and then I, you know, that's why I, that's why I did this video this morning. Is I was thinking about those muffins this morning. I had some with my coffee because I had some yesterday, and I didn't get hungry. It's like um, I had I had a muffin. I had some. Um, I had a muffin. And then later in the day, I had some steel cut oats seasoned with applesauce and cinnamon and a little bit of nutmeg, okay? Sometimes Dale will put in um, milk. You can use some organic honey, if you, and, and, you know, people are making it in their backyard, so you can find organic honey. We saw a sign down the yard. Like I said, we've been slowly adding the sweets, but we've been doing it in moderation. And we've been doing it in a way where it's healthiest as possible. And um, so we saw a sign down the road um, a week ago, whenever. So last Saturday, I knocked on the guy's door and I bought a jar from him. So And Dale loved it. Yeah, so I, I'm, not, I'm not into it so much as he is, but he liked it. And so I'm glad that I got it for him. Um, but yeah, yesterday I had the muffin and um, I had the uh, steel cut oats and then you know it's like I just never got hungry I never got hungry during the day when you eat like this you stay satisfied and 
the muffin recipe, because I know you're like, what, what was in the muffin already? <laughs> um, he did, he did cornmeal. He sweetened it with unsweetened applesauce. And, you know, he's a wild man. I, I bought, I'm always like pinching pennies, pinching pennies. I handle the budget around here. But I bought a small bag of blueberries and I said, you know, the equivalent of one container would be half of this. Of course, he put all of it. <laughs> so they are blueberried up. But, you know, blueberries are good for us. They're good for him. And um, they're tart. So what, what you end up doing is you, you change your taste bud from sweet to tart. Okay. But the applesauce combined with the blueberries, combined with the cornmeal, it's got that stick to your bone factor. And the only thing that I would do different next time is I would double the applesauce, you know, add more applesauce. And I would, I like that they're blueberried up. So they're mostly blueberry. It's funny. And um, put a little cinnamon and a little bit of nutmeg. Because the nutmeg, I noticed, really woke it up. We've completely cut out butter. That was a big one. We used to put butter on everything. And recently, what we found is coconut oil. Okay? So what you can do if you want butter, because butter is expensive too. I mean, it's like, why is it so expensive? But it is. But coconut oil, and coconut oil is too, but you only need it in moderation. And when you, when you cut back the way we have, you don't use that much of it anyway. So, so what we do, coconut oil is really good for your body. We will pop in a piece of toast, and then I'll spoon out a little bit of coconut oil. And if you sprinkle, and we use, um, we use that Himalayan pink sea salt. <laughs> Dale does uh, recipe videos, and he loves saying Himalayan pink sea salt. He loves saying it. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll put a little bit of salt on there. It tastes like you're having butter. It tastes like butter. Moderation on the salt. Moderation on the coconut oil. Okay? And you can add that to your recipes. So we, so we sometimes cook with it, like in an egg. We use olive oil. You know, when I do cook a Sunday egg dish, um, which I've got a recipe in my videos with a Sunday egg dish, um, we use olive oil, okay? Everything in moderation. And yes, these items are more expensive than, than you know, you might be used to paying, but you use less of them because your body needs less of them. And if you're not buying the sugar added items, I eat a lot of nuts. I eat, I eat peanuts and um, unsalted. I get the unsalted. So unsalted, unsweetened is the key if you're going to buy lots of greens. Spinach um, is so good for you. Beans are good for you. Okay, um, they stick to your bones. If we eat rice, we eat brown rice. If we eat pasta, we eat whole wheat pasta. So you just have to adjust a little bit. And if you buy things when they're on sale and you stock up, you can do it in budget. Basically what I did when I, when I got him home, I was able to buy the items that were on the superfood list and keep it in our budget. Now what I have found that we're doing our garden, like, okay, when we, when we realized, okay, we need to get serious about our garden, we, we, we planted more of the greens that he likes, and I've been freezing his spinach. And we're getting ready to plant our second round of spinach and kale because it will stay green up until a hard frost. And so, because our kale is just now dying back, our chard is just now dying back. Chard is wonderful. It has a lot more nutritional value than celery, okay? So everything we have planted and everything that we buy, we make sure it packs a big punch in the nutrition zone. 
So I know I've gone on and on. I'm sure I'm going to edit this and choppy choppy it up. I thank you for listening. I hope this has been helpful to you guys. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you want to know more about the adventure, the trauma, the emotional part. I mean, it's taken me this long to be able to just talk about it. It's been a really, it was a really big shock to our system. But I'm proud of Dale. He took it seriously. He um, embraced his garden in a way that he hadn't in the past. It's because he didn't feel good. He didn't realize why he didn't feel good. If you are popping, okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to keep talking. I guess I'm, I guess I'm not done talking. Heart attacks don't always show up the same way for everyone. He was getting a tightening in his throat. When we went to, because we were hanging out on the heart ward, we saw lots of different nurses and you know, I learned a lot there. I learned a lot that I'm not going to talk about everything in this video. But you know, what I did learn was the nurses said that the symptoms are different. They're not always the same. It's not always, you know, the elephant on your chest thing. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it feels like a hernia, like a hiatal hernia. But if you're popping aspirin all the time, if you're self-medicating all the time, you probably need to go to the doctor. And don't just say, treat this one symptom. Because I know somebody else that had hiatal hernia, well, you know what? That was a symptom. That wasn't just the only thing going on for her. I think it was a symptom of the heart disease. So when, when you do go to the doctor, yeah, I could talk about this section for a long time. When you go to the doctor, you need to be your own patient advocate. You need to understand that the doctors are doing the best they can because they only have a limited amount of time and they're told to treat things. And they'll tell you, you know, go for a walk, whatever. But very few, and like I said, we got so lucky. We got so lucky with Dr. Boonswang. Because not only was he an amazing surgeon, Dale had 90% blockage. We were lucky. We were lucky he didn't die that morning when he had his heart attack. But Dr. Boonswang was so firm and so clear. And I knew I know why he did it. Because he cares about people. He's a good guy. And he knew... He had a limited amount of time with us. And I can tell his passion is he wishes nobody had to have open heart surgery. He's happy that he can fix people, but he wants to get the message out that diet is important. It's not necessary for you to have to go through this. And there is a movie that he recommended it's called, I think it's called Forks Over Knives. Okay, I think it's available on um, Netflix. I think it's on Amazon. We, we had Amazon Prime. So we were able to, I think we had to rent it, but whatever. Um, rent the movie. Watch it. Because it'll give you a clue about what I'm talking about. Eating foods with the least amount of chemicals as possible, however you can do it. You know, not necessarily just a vegetarian diet, but if you're going to eat foods that are from animals, try to eat foods from animals that have the least amount of chemicals in them and the least amount of fat because the fat holds, it, it retains um, those chemicals. So that's why you want to have uh, the low fat skim milk if possible. Can't retain that stuff. And without getting technical, that's how I can, hopefully I'm getting my point across. So 
I thank you guys for listening this morning. I ho- I know I've rattled on and on, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to edit this where it's as succinct as possible. If there's more about our open heart surgery adventure that you would like to know about, apparently I'm finally able to talk about it. So leave me a comment. Dale has talked about it too in in different ways on his channel. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him because he has been talking about it and he's embraced it. He's embraced the change. He lost, um, I think he's lost 70 pounds. I haven't lost as much as he have and I, I don't know why that is, but I've lost quite a bit. I think I've lost 40 pounds probably um, and I feel better. I feel good. And, um, but I've, I'm eating the same food he's eating. I took it as, um, I needed to change too. If he needed to change, I needed to change. So I did. So, um, thank you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope I haven't rattled on too long. Take care. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment.